You're watching Health Matters on WJCT. I'm Karen Fagans. Surgeons here in Jacksonville are performing a cutting edge procedure to help babies born with a condition called craniosynostosis, which can cause an abnormally shaped head and affect brain development. A craniosynostosis is basically a premature fusion of the joints in the skull. As the brain expands, the skull puts more bone down along these suture lines, allowing the skull to expand. If you look at a baby's skull, it's uh, much smaller than our adult skull, and the way we go from a baby skull to an adult skull is the brain grows and, and the skull grows in proportion to it. What can happen sometimes is that you can get a premature fusion along one or two of these suture lines. If it closes too soon, it could cause problems with respect to limiting uh, brain growth and development, uh, in addition to the fact that it uh, produces uh, an unusual looking uh, shape of the head. When Chase was first born, we noticed that his nose was shifted over to the left a little bit and that his right eye was open more than the left eye. It looked like he almost was winking out of his left eye. He was diagnosed after a trip to the emergency room with craniosynostosis. They did a CT scan and the doctors came in and told us that, that this was his condition. I had never heard of it before, was sort of lost about exactly what it was and at first it was really overwhelming for all of us. Two procedures that are available to treat craniosynostosis. The first one is the open and it's where there's an incision from ear to ear and it's a zigzag suture and um, they basically pull back the entire scalp. With the endoscopic way, they use cameras to guide and there's much less blood loss and quicker recovery and obviously less chance for infection whenever there's not that big of an incision. I was part of a team that developed a newer way of doing this. Uh, what our procedure does is we make an incision above the top here and along the side and we cut out the abnormal suture here and make a bar this way so that we can create sort of a wall of bone that can be pushed forward to even up with the other side. It takes more than just correcting the shape of the head, you also have to make some corrections to the shape of the eye and some of the facial structures along with it. And that's where the teamwork between a pediatric neurosurgeon and a craniofacial surgeon comes in in being able to optimize our results. I think this is really kind of the future of major surgeries. We're literally there from start to finish together. And there are things that Dr. Heger prioritizes as a pediatric neurosurgeon and there are things that I prioritize as a pediatric craniofacial surgeon and the dance goes on continuously. It's not like one person has their part and then they move away and another person. We're working simultaneously. Anytime you're doing something through small scopes, uh, small incisions, it's more challenging for us. There's no question because uh, it's, it's still a relatively new procedure, but it's more challenging for us. It's, it sometimes may take a little bit longer. But if you look at the recovery time after the baby wakes up, the recovery time, the blood loss, it's well worth us going through that struggle to do it minimally invasively uh, in order for their recovery to be as quick as it is. The good thing is after a couple days, he's, when the swelling goes down, he's going to be just back to normal and have a completely normal life. And he's going to wear a helmet for a couple months to a year after the surgery. The helmet. Uh, enables us to nudge bone very carefully in certain directions so that we're able to get a, a final product that looks like uh, the child never had surgery. And that's our goal, not only to enable the children to develop and be all that they can be, uh, but also so that um, there's never any social stigma associated with having the craniosynostosis in the first place. It's very important for us to get these kids in between three to four months of age in order for us to do them endoscopically. We still have an open approach available for kids that are diagnosed later, but it would be our preference to try to get to most of these kids endoscopically. The biggest obstacle that we face is for both uh, pediatricians and parents alike to be able to pick this up early. Children, when they're born, they're, as they pass through, pass through the birth canal, the head gets misshapen. But within a few weeks, that should start getting better. Uh, head shapes that are getting worse over time, uh, 
should be something that's worked up a little bit further. You know, I think what Dr. Higa's done is brought a really cutting edge um, procedure to Jacksonville. I mean, I think that there are very, very few centers around the country that do this successfully. I know people that have traveled across several states and had to stay in hotels for months at a time. And, and for me to be able to be living here in Jacksonville and have this type of care, it's wonderful.